welcome to Jesus is Lord Church. We're so excited that you've chosen to worship with us today. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you stop by our Connect station for more information. Attention Jesus is Lord family, our JILC Dream Team is currently recruiting for media and worship. If you're interested in being a part of these two powerful groups, you can sign up today at any of the Connect Centers. JILC Dream Team, we're better together. JILC Family Empowered Kids is the place to be every Sunday morning for your children. Fun, games, activities, and ministry that's right on their level is sure to make an impact on their lives for Jesus. If your kids are missing Empowered Kids, they're missing it. Empowered Kids, every Sunday morning, right here at Jesus is Lord Church. Empowered Live is now broadcasting with a live studio audience. If you'd like to be a part of these powerful world changers that are helping take the gospel of Jesus around the globe, we'll see you this Monday at 7 p.m. Doors closed at 7.15 with a 7.30 broadcast start time. Empowered Live, empowering the body of Christ to live for Him today. Are you looking to go deeper in your walk with God? Join us every Monday at 6.30 p.m. for our Jesus is Lord Church Monday Bible Study. Dive deeper into biblical truths that will transform the way that you look at your world. Jesus is Lord Monday Bible Studies, every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Are you ready for a little pick-me-up to help you get through your work week? Join us every Thursday for Jesus is Lord Midweek Service at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us at the Connect Station. JILC Ladies, the body of Christ is better together because we all have specific gifts that encourage and impact each other. Get ready for our next Heart to Heart meeting on January 31st at 7 p.m. as we discuss the specific gift that God has given each of us to impact the kingdom. Heart to Heart, January 31st at 7 p.m. Young adults ages 20 to 40, are you committed to creating a culture that connects and cares? Join us for our next Young Adult Night on the third Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m. Jesus is Lord family, Valentine's Day is right around the corner and our bakers are busy preparing some sweet treats. Get your sweetheart a sweetie gram, only available at the JILC Kingdom Cafe on February 12th.
welcome to today's broadcast. I'm Pastor Kevin McGinnis. This is Jesus is Lord Church, and I believe today's word is about to bless your life. Take a moment right now, hit that button, share, invite, let people know what God is doing right now. This word is going to change your life. We've made a decision right here at the beginning of the year, January, to put God first in our family, our finances, and our future. Now listen, if you're not following us, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. Don't go anywhere. We're about to worship God together, and I got a word just for you. Let the joys of the Lord sing. Yeah. 
this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to make a declaration this morning. Yeah. Hands together like this. Come on. Come on. Come on. One, two. Did you really on it? Right. Must be forever fruitful. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except that they come through me. Let's declare, let that mercy stand true. Say it again. Say it. One more time. Trust 
directing our path so father we give you glory this morning we worship you king jesus but we will hide your word in our heart oh god we will trust in you and lean out on our own understanding say we worship you jesus we worship you jesus trust in the lord with all your heart let's sing trust, trust in the lord with all your heart your hands like this. Come on. Come on. Hey. hey. And I want you to understand what you're saying. That you're saying, I took the time to pray and fast to align my will with your will, God. So when we make this declaration this morning, I want you to say it not from your head, but I want you to say it from your spirit of expectation. That you know that when you pray, things gotta happen, all right? We're gonna all say it one last time. Come on. Say, trust in the Lord. Trust in Trust in the Lord. 
say this right here. Listen, I want you to say, how great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great Come on. is our God. Everybody in all the sea. How great. Come on. How great is our God. Whoa. the church say how great how great same church come on sing come on drums come on sing with me how great. lift your worship this morning come on lift your worship this morning come on church now if we're really trying to make God's name famous that means the people outside gotta hear us let's sing it again come on how great you say come on you say Come on, sing. You get it in your spirit. Come on. You know the same God that healed your body. Come on. You know the same God that saved your soul. It's great. Let's check. Come on. Here's our God. Everybody let your voices say. Come on. 
pastor's coming but don't miss the moment of where God is doing something come on lift your hands all over this place all over this place let's just have a moment right now to thank God for him speaking into our hearts these last 21 days give him he's what he's due today the fruit of your lips the fruit of your lips the word of God says that if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves, I dare you right now to just lift up a praise to the Lord and just say, God, this praise is because you kept me. This praise is because you left, you never left me, God. This praise is because you have always been good. You have always been good. Can we stand on our feet, lift our hands to heaven? Can we stand to our feet and lift our hands to heaven? The psalmist declared that our God is great and he is greatly to be praised. If you've never experienced his greatness, his power, his miracles, I believe for many today will be that day. I believe today God is in this place. I believe that his presence is in this place. Today we are concluding 21 days of prayer and fasting. I believe as we've sacrificed our time, our talents, our treasures, we've surrendered everything to God at the beginning of this year. I believe that miracles are getting ready to happen here today. If you believe that, clap your hands and give Him praise and glory. I said you could do better than that. You could do much better than that. A God that delivered you from eternal hell. You can't praise him louder than that. A God that saved you and set you free from the power of darkness. Come on, you can do much better than what you're doing. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom the Lord has redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Come on, clap your hands one more time and give the Lord a mighty shout. A mighty shout. A mighty shout of victory in this place. Those of you that are here today, we welcome you. We love you. Those that are joining us online, we love you. Thank you for joining us today. You may be seated. Today, I believe with all of my heart that people are here because of prayer. I believe because somebody had enough love and enough compassion to reach out and extend an invitation to you. Today, if this is your first time, would you stand? If this is your first time, would you stand? We just want to welcome you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Come on, let's give them a great welcome. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. Tell somebody, say, this is a miracle row. Tell, turn around, tell somebody, say, this is a miracle row. Miracles are walking up and down your row. His name is Jesus. Can you say amen? Give the Lord praise and give him glory. Go with me in your Bible to the book of Acts chapter number 2. I'm reading today. I'm beginning in Holy Ghost headquarters. Those of you that are joining us online, I'm reading from the book of Acts. How many of you are ready today? Nobody's ready? Is anybody ready? How many of you are ready for a miracle? Shout, I'm ready for a miracle. How many of you are ready for a miracle in your family? A miracle in your health? A miracle in your finances? A miracle in your mind? A miracle in your marriage? A miracle for your children? Everybody shout, today is my day for a miracle. Come on, say it like you mean it or don't say it. Today is my day for a miracle. In the book of Acts, chapter number 2. I want us to begin reading in verse number 1. If you love God's word, that means you're attentive to the word of God. 
You have a hunger for the Word of God, and when you feed on the Word of God, you will grow and you will develop and you will become everything that God has created you to be. How many of you want to become everything that God has called and created you to be? Lift your hand say, that's me. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 through 4. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. Everybody say in one accord. Say in one place. And the Bible says something happened. Everybody shout, suddenly. Come on, shout, suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house. The Bible says where they were sitting. The Bible says, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And it sat upon each one of them. And the Bible says, say it together, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I want to talk to you today from the subject, in one accord. Say that with me, in one accord. They were, in the Bible says the day of Pentecost had fully come. They were gathered in one mind and one accord in the upper room. Jesus spoke. He said, I want you to go and wait and tarry for the promise of my spirit in the upper room. And I want you to wait and I want you to pray until you are clothed with supernatural power. I want you to know today the key to demonstrating the power of God to this generation is we've got to be filled with supernatural power. Young people today do not want a powerless gospel. They want to experience a gospel of power. That's why the Bible says, Paul said, I come unto you with enticing words of man's intellect or wisdom. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4 and 5, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith would not rest in the wisdom of a man, but in the power of God. Everybody say, Lord, show us your power today. This is what's missing today in the modern church. There's no power. They get up, they share three points in a poem, they give you a good story, but there's no power. But it is the power of God that will set you free. It is the power of God that will liberate you. It is the power of God that will change your life. Come on, somebody help me today. It is the power of God that will restore your family. It is the power of God that will burn a cancer out of your body. It is the power of God that will bring your children from the north, south, and east, and west and draw them to this place and save their soul and set them on fire. Paul said in Thessalonians, the kingdom of God does not exist by word alone, but in power and in demonstration. Everybody shout in one accord. The Bible says they were in the upper room. Everybody shout the upper room. They were in the right place at the right time. How do you believe today you and I are in the right place at the right time? They were in the right place at the right time. They were united, the Bible says, in one mind and in one accord. Say that together. One mind, one accord. The power of unity. If you tuned in on Thursday night, if you were here Thursday, watched us on social, you know that I preached on Thursday night about the power of unity or the power of agreement. So the 120, 500 received an invitation from Jesus, but only 120 had enough faith and obedience to believe, amen, to go to the upper room and wait for the fulfillment of the promise. I don't know about you, I need the power of God every Every day. I don't know about you. I need the Holy Ghost to lead and guide me and direct me. Somebody shout aloud, amen. So they were in the right place at the right time. Everybody shout 120. The remnant rose up. Today, the remnant is rising. We are witnessing the rising of the remnant in this hour. Those that are hungry, those that really love God. See, there's a lot of people, they say they love Jesus, but their lives do not line up with what they say. When you love Jesus, you reach other people for Jesus. When you love Jesus, you share your faith and your love with everyone you come into contact with. So they were in one place, in one mind, in one accord. They were united in one mind in one accord in one place and after they were in one accord in one place something began to happen everybody shout then the fire came say it together then the fire came the fire fell they came together the fire came and it changed everything and the church was born in a blaze of glory they were in one mind and one accord and the bible says because of that they left that place they went in fearful but they came out fearless they went into the upper room discouraged, but they came out full of faith and power. And the Bible says because they were in one mind and one accord, the
the promise of God manifested and they turn the world upside down for Jesus. How many of you are ready to turn the world upside down for Jesus? Even in the time of Philip, when he began to share the gospel, the Bible says many gave heed concerning the miracles that were performed. They were in one accord concerning the miracles that took place. Today, if we are in one mind and if we are in one accord, I've come to tell you after this 21 days of prayer and fasting, I believe according to Isaiah 58, chains are going to be broken. Everybody shout, break those chains. Shout it, break those chains. I believe that oppression is going to be stopped. I believe that those that are bound are going to be liberated by the mighty power of Almighty God. Everybody shout, we've got to get together. Tell somebody it's time we get together. We're better together. We're stronger together. We're invincible together. Alone, I'm only a voice. But together, if we will believe, if we will stand in Jesus' name, if we'll stand in this last day, we will be a mighty impenetrable force arrayed against the kingdom of darkness. I feel like preaching already. Tell somebody it's time to get it together. It's time to come together. When they came together in the upper room, then they prayed. Then the fire came. Then everything changed. How many of you ready for everything to change? I said, how many of you ready for everything to change? Get your eyes off your little problem. I'm talking about there's a world in need. There's a world that's lost and dying and headed directly to a devil's hell. But you and I have got power for a purpose. We are anointed for an assignment. And I believe with all of my heart that if we will join together, nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. Tell somebody, I told you this is a miracle row. Tell somebody this is a believer's row. They came together. The fire came and everything changed. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we see according to the book of Acts, they came in one mind. Everybody shout in one accord. And all of a sudden something happened supernaturally suddenly. It, come on somebody shout hallelujah. If you need a suddenly shout. If you need a suddenly shout. A suddenly in your health, shout. A suddenly for your son, shout. If you need a suddenly, the catalyst is unity. Unity is the catalyst for your suddenly. Shout amen somebody. Unity increases power. Say that with me. Unity increases power. They were in one mind. They were in one accord. Then the fire came and everybody was changed. Shout suddenly. I wish somebody would push your neighbor a little bit because some of them didn't get enough sleep. Some of them need a good cheeseburger after church. After this fast, you've got to get some protein in your body. Put a smile on that ugly mug. Push somebody and say, suddenly, suddenly you were blind. Suddenly you go to see. Suddenly your son was bound. Suddenly your son is set free. Suddenly I was sick, but all of a sudden it turned around and I was healed. Suddenly, suddenly. Suddenly, there's about to be a suddenly. I came to assault the spirit of racism. I came to assault the spirit of prejudice. I came to assault the spirit of infirmity because God's about to perform a suddenly. It's amazing when some of you were saved. You would dance in the discos all night, but now you sit there like a statue. I want you on your feet because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Slap somebody a high five and shout, get ready. It's your season of suddenly. Tell them, tell them, tell them. It's your season of suddenly. 2023, the church has to come together. The church has been divided long enough. COVID has divided the church. Doctrine has divided the church. Stop splitting hairs over things that have no eternal significance. We need to understand God has not called leaders to fight one another. We need to understand many times it is your preferences that cause you to miss your purpose. Say that with me. My preferences can miss 
my purpose. I can miss my purpose because I'm caught up with my preferences. The sound is too loud. That's a preference. I don't like the colors on the wall. That's a preference. I don't like the way they preach and the way they sing. That's your preference. Why don't you put your preferences aside and plug into the power today? Because once you encounter the mighty power of the Lord, you will never be the same again. I've preached the gospel around the world. I've seen people that were full-blown AIDS, dying 70 pounds, totally healed by the power of God. I've seen people with tumors all over their body, completely healed by the power of God. I've seen blind eyes open and deaf ears unstop. I've seen people with severed spines, paralyzed, reduced to a wheelchair, leap, jump, and shout when the power came on them. How can you see? sit there when somebody next to you needs a miracle from the hand of God. Tell somebody we're in one mind and we're in one accord. Get out of your seat and say let's get together. It's time to come together. There's great power in unity. I love what Jesus said. Everybody said Jesus preaching. Again I tell you be seated if two of you on earth agree. Tell somebody I agree. If two of you on earth agree harmonize together. Everybody shout harmonize. Everybody shout in harmony. Shout now. Make a symphony together about whatever. Everybody shout whatever. And anything, anything and everything that they may ask. If we come together, if two agree on earth as touching anything that we shall ask of our Father. The Bible says, and anything and everything that we ask, everybody say, it shall come to pass. Everybody shout, if you've sought God over the last three weeks, say it with me, it will come to pass. Say and it shall be done. My God, I feel this right now. It shall be done by, not by man, but by my Father that is in heaven. Clap your hands if you believe something supernatural is getting ready to happen suddenly in this season for you and your entire family. I want every mother and father in this house, wherever you're watching me, to leap out on your feet and give God a shout of victory. He says, when you come together for where two or three, wherever two or three are drawn together, gathered together as my followers into my name, everybody say, there I am. So he says, if you get together, I'll show up. If you come together, I'll show up. And when I show up, miracles are going to happen. Everybody shout, we're stronger together. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants people to walk in discord instead in one mind and one one accord. You are either in accord or you're in discord. You're either flowing in unity or you're the cause of division. Everybody shout this power in unity. My God, I feel like preaching this the rest of the year. There's power in unity. United we stand and divided we fall. If we're going to see this generation touched by the mighty power of God, if we're going to see this heroin epidemic overthrown on Long Island, we've got to come together. Oh my God, somebody shout hallelujah. Tell somebody I need you. 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 Oh, I just need Jesus. No, you don't. The Bible says if two or three are gathered together in his name, he said, then I'll be there in the midst. As long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. That's not even scriptural. The Bible says if two or three are gathered together in my name, it took 120 for the outpouring in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, and it's not going to happen any other different. We got to come together. Tell somebody it's time we come together. Tell somebody, get yourself together and let's come together. Some of you need to get back up. You need to get out of bed. You need to get off the couch. You need to get dressed. You need to get back to church. Somebody shout hallelujah. And around here, we don't just feed on Sunday like the Catholics. We feed on Thursday. We feed on every day. I'm maturing. Every day, I'm nurturing. Every day, I'm developing in my faith. Shout amen, somebody. 
The scripture says that when two or three, I want to preach, I need the first two rows to help me because we're about to kick the devil's teeth in today. I said I need the first two rows to help me. Somebody's son is held hostage by a spirit of addiction. Somebody's daughter's bound by perversion. But I came to make an announcement. You will not have their soul devil. Something is about to happen suddenly. Shout suddenly. The scripture says, tell somebody where two or three are gathered together. Look around the room. There's more than two or three here. He said, if we gather together, everybody say one accord to gather together. In my name be seated. I am there also. See, it's not enough just to be gathered. There are a lot of churches on Long Island that are gathered, but they're not together. You can gather with your family and not be together. You can be with people that you love and not be together. Just because you gather doesn't mean there's a spirit of agreement and unity. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody, 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 somebody shout hallelujah. We've got to come together. Everybody shout in one accord. And then something's going to happen for you this year that has never happened before. And all your Christian living, something's going to happen. Shout we're coming together in a spirit of unity. If we're going to see the moving of the Holy Ghost, unity is critical to the moving of the spirit and that's why God can't move in your family because two that are together that should be together are divided and the enemy has access because there's no agreement and there's no covering over the children but when you come together in the spirit of love faith, obedience and unity something will happen I need everybody in the wings jump up and praise you wherever you are Tell somebody, let's become one this year. Let's speak the same thing. Are you doing what I'm telling you to do? Tell them, let's become one. Let's come together. Let's speak the same thing. One mission, one vision to love each other, to love our families, to love our world, to love our community into the kingdom of God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Satan's strategy has never changed. Satan's strategy remains the same. He has never changed. He's come to divide. He's come to kill. He's come to conquer. He's come to disrupt unity. He's come to set animosity and hostility between people. Everybody shout division produces destruction. Say that again. Division produces Destruction for a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. See that with me. A house divided against itself cannot stand. God removed certain people from this church so that this church can come together in the spirit of unity. They were not a part of our next level. They're like rocket boosters. When you boost up, the rocket boosters fall off. That's when you're ready to soar. I come to tell somebody there are people that have fallen off your life because they're not a part of the next level of your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout we've got to come together in a spirit of unity. Division is what brings destruction. Division is what ruins a marriage. Division is what destroys the fabric of family. We see even at the Tower of Babel, I talked on this quickly on Thursday night, that the people, they were uniting together. Everybody shout, uniting against God. Even that he knew through their unity, God knew that there was nothing that these people could accomplish together because they were in, everybody say, one accord. So we can Confused their language, and the Bible says, and scattered them. We see them against God at the Tower of Babel. But then Acts 2 that I'm preaching today, everybody shall preach on, Pastor Kevin. On the day of Pentecost, the people were united for God. They were not against God. And despite their language, despite their skin color, 
despite their origin, despite their culture, despite their ethnic background. The Bible says even in spite of their race, God gave them one spirit, one spirit pouring out his blessing upon them. And they all understood one another. Can somebody shout hallelujah concerning the Tower of Babel? It says in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 16, verse chapter 11, verse 6, the Lord said they were as one people, say one people, speaking the same language. They have begun to do this. God said even though they were wicked, they were in one accord, and nothing they planned to do was impossible for them. Shout amen. Everybody shout, if we unite, if we come together, there will be nothing this year that we cannot accomplish together for the glory of God. Raise your hands and shout hallelujah. John chapter 17, verses 22 and 23. Uh, he said this, Jesus speaking, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one. Jesus talking to his father. Everybody shout his last prayer before the cross. He's talking to his father. Some of you need to have a talk with Jesus today. You haven't talked to him in a long time. But today, something's getting ready to happen that has never, my God, I feel this in my bones. Something is getting ready to happen for you that has never happened before. Can somebody shout aloud, amen. The Bible says Jesus talking to his father, I've given them, I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one. Everybody say, that they may be one. This was the last prayer that Jesus prayed. Pay attention. Look right at this crazy preacher. That they may be one as we are one. Everybody shout that they may be one. Who was he talking to? His people. Everybody shout, he's talking to me. Turn around, tell somebody, say, he's talking to you. He's not just talking to me, he's talking to every one of us today. Jesus said to his father, I pray God, I pray father. He says that they may be one as we are one. Somebody shout, and he says, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete, everybody shout, complete unity. Everybody shout, complete unity. Then the world will know. My God, then the world will know. You don't have to shove the message down their throat. After they see our unity, then the world will know. After they see our love for each other, then the world will know. After they see we're concerned about each other and we serve one another and we love people unselfishly, then the world, everybody shout, then the world will know. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus' last prayer before he went to the cross of Calvary was a prayer of unity. Everybody shout unity, not uniformity. <laughs> Not everybody. See, you want everybody to be a carbon copy and clone like you. But God is not looking for people to be carbon copies of each other. We should be followers patterning our love and our life after the master. Shout amen, somebody. Is anybody still with me in this room? He was, this was the last prayer of Jesus, that the church would live in unity. Say that together. We will live in unity. Unity is our greatest witness to the world. Unity and love is our greatest example and witness and testimony to the world. Can you say amen? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse 10. Paul said this, go there if you don't have the ability to get there. If you don't know have your Bible with you, if you don't know the word of God, I'll be gone before you get there. I urge you therefore, brothers and sisters, for the sake of my name, of our Lord Jesus Christ to agree. To live in unity with one another. Now he's not talking about living in unity with wickedness. He's not talking about living as a Christian with worldliness. Are you listening to me? I urge you therefore my brothers and sisters for the sake of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to agree to live. Everybody say live in unity with one another and put to rest. Everybody shout put it to rest. Crucify it. My God bury it. Put it to rest. Any division that attempts to tear you apart. Be restored, everybody say, as one united body, living in perfect harmony. Form a consistent choreography among yourselves, having common perspective. Are you listening to me? Having a common perspective. The Bible says with shared values, the purpose of God's presence in our life is to make you more loving. 
That is the purpose of God's presence. To make you more loving. Amen. Not to make you more harsh. Not to make you more stubborn. Not to make you more opinionated. I know I've learned something about some people in this church. The older they get, the more they sharing and vocalizing their opinions. But listen, when you are growing in the spirit and walking and flowing and loving in unity, you need to understand that it's not for you to become more opinionated or more aggressive or more stubborn. Can you say amen? But you are to become more loving when you understand and you spend time in the presence of God. Can somebody shout, preach, Pastor Kevin. Tell somebody, we need each other. Tell them we need each other. Oh, I know you think you're God's gift to the world, but you're not. I know you think you're strong enough to stand by yourself, but I promise you, when the storms of life come, we need people that will uphold us in our time of testing. Can somebody shout, praise the Lord. Can I get somebody in the front row to open your mouth and shout, hallelujah. We need, tell somebody, we need each other. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse 21, he said this, Paul said this, Brother Isaac, he says, the eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. He said, the head can say to the feet, I don't need you. We need to understand that we need each other. The body cannot operate just with the head. And the body cannot just operate with arms. And the body cannot just operate with eyes. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about the body of Christ now. Every one of you have giftings and abilities. Every one of you have talents. But I want you to know when we join together in love and in unity, God says, I will command the blessing upon you. Can say amen. Everything I'm preaching preaching to you, for those of you that are new to this church, is in the Bible. Everything I'm preaching to you is in the Word of God. Jesus, Jesus has declared most of the verses that I'm quoting to you today. In a few moments, I'm going to pray, and we're going to come into agreement. And when we pray, I believe with all my heart, there are certain people that I will not ask to agree with me because they do not have faith for the supernatural. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is not dead. He's not hanging on a cross on Calvary, Jesus is alive. Shout, he's alive. Come on, if you really believe that, understand that you're alive because he lives. When he got out of the grave, you got out of the grave. When he came off the cross, you came off of the cross. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. I feel working of miracles right now. I feel the working of miracles right now. Somebody shout, we got to come together. The Bible says, see, some of you have been raised in, you've been raised in demonic backgrounds. You've been indoctrinated by things that are not even in the Bible. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 13 and 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He healed in Bible days and he still heals today. The only thing that will hinder you from receiving a miracle is faith in the word of God. Reach out and tell somebody, say, I need you. The Bible says, Paul said, each one of us are a part of the body. So we need to understand that we we need each other. Tell somebody, I need you. Tell somebody next to you, I love you. Oh my God, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. It is your responsibility to lay down pride. It is your responsibility to put aside your preferences so that we can focus this year on God's purpose. Because you can miss, I'm going to say it again, you can miss God's purpose because of your own preferences. John chapter 13, go there with me, I'm moving as quickly as I can. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. It's amazing to me, we could sit down and watch 11 hours of Netflix, but we can't handle 60 minutes of Bible miracle preaching. Somebody shout, there's something wrong with the church. There's something wrong with America. There's something wrong with the body of Christ. That we got plans and we've got time for everything else. But we have excluded God from our lives. We have excluded God from our school system. We have excluded God from our families. We have excluded God from our nation. But it's still in God we trust. This nation was founded on God. And this nation will remain founded on God. It's not important who's in the White House. What's important is who's in God's house. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, somebody shout, it'll change. Jesus gave us a new commandment. John chapter 13, are you still with me? Everybody shout, word up. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. Are you there? Talk to me. Somebody talk to me. I feel lonely up here. 
just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. See, there's a lot of people, they talk a big game, but there's no, there's no walk. They say they love people, but they never win souls. Their faith is a lie, and they're fraudulent. When you love people, you're lo when you love people, you're telling people the way to eternal life. When you love people, you're sharing with them the truth and the message of the cross of Jesus Christ. When you love people, you are not ashamed to tell them the truth, even in jeopardy of losing them as friends on this planet earth. Because I'd rather lose people as friends on earth, but gain them for eternity in heaven. Somebody raise your hands and shout aloud, amen. Everybody shout hallelujah. He says your love for one another, everybody shout my love for one another, will prove to the the world that you are my disciples can you say amen Paul said in Ephesians he says guard the spirit guard everybody say guard the spirit of unity he says you've got to guard it you've got to protect the spirit of unity say amen say that with me I will it's your responsibility, not mine. It's everyone in this room that's hearing me today. Those that are watching me on Facebook and YouTube, it is your responsibility to protect the spirit of unity in the church. Say amen. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 3 and 4. Paul said, be faithful to guard. Everybody say, the sweet harmony. Unity of the Holy Spirit among you in the bond of peace, being one body. Everybody say, we're one body. Everybody say, one spirit. As you were all called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny, our love for one another will show the world. Our love for each other will show the world we belong to Jesus, and that will be a testimony of the power of Christ that is evident in our life that will transform their life. Can you say amen? Paul said, make every effort. Everybody say this with me. Make every effort. How many of you know some people do not want to make an effort? But Paul said, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. Everybody say, through the bond of peace. Nothing is worth your peace. Don't let anything rob your peace. Don't let any person rob your peace. He said, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Say amen. So once you get your mind off God and you put your mind on your problems, that's when trouble comes. That's when anxiety anxiety comes. I just heard the Holy Ghost say there are about 26 people here today that you, you're about to be delivered from every anxiety attack and you will not have it ever again for the rest of your life. Throw your hands up and shout, I'm free from all fear. Shout hallelujah somebody. He says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Once I feel myself, once I feel like I'm losing my peace, I sense in my spirit that I'm losing my peace, I immediately got to evaluate my circle. Because the people around you will affect your peace. The people that claim to be your friends, if they're not building you up, they're not your friend, they are your enemy. If they're tearing you down and every time you turn around, they put a knife in your back, you got the wrong people in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. When we work together in unity, Psalm 133 says, verses one, Psalm 133, verse 1 through 3, that God will command the blessing where there is a spirit of unity. Everybody say, God commands the blessing. Come on, stay with me. You can take a little bit more. Shout, I, got, I can take more, Pastor. Everybody shout, I want more. I want the word. Some of you have never heard the word of God preached before. And I promise you today that there are things that are being uprooted in your heart. You've never been in an atmosphere that is the catalyst of God's power and presence. And you have never sensed peace. You've never sensed the power of God. You've never sensed the presence of God. But I promise you this, dear friend. If you will open up your heart, even though you don't understand something will happen in your life and you will never be the same again you're leaving this church today different than when you came there are people here today that need miracles in their life you need miracles in your health and I'm here to tell you if you just lift one of your hands to heaven when you go back to the doctor the report is going to change when we come together God commands the blessing everybody shout we got to come together Everybody shout in one accord. Say amen, somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's easy. Any fool can be divisive. 
Any idiot can be divisive and judgmental. The Bible tells us, remember what Paul said? He said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 13, so each of us shall give an account. Say, we will give an account. Say this with me. I will one day have to give an account for my life. Each of us shall give an account of himself, give an answer in reference to judgment to God. Then let us no more criticize and blame and pass judgment on one another. Let me read that again. Let me slow down. Let us no more criticize and blame and pass judgment on one another. Say that with me. Lord, help me not to criticize, blame, and pass judgment on one another. But rather, watch this, decide and endeavor never to put a stumbling block or an obstacle or a hindrance in the way of a brother. Say amen. Amen. Satan's number one goal, look at me today, Satan's number one goal, number one strategy is to divide the church. Satan's number one strategy is to get us to fight and feud and disconnect us from one another. Say amen somebody. Shout hallelujah somebody. Satan is trying to divide people like never before. Tell somebody stay away from people like that. Tell somebody, stay away from people that cause division. Stay away from the troublemakers in the church. I got them here. Maybe my God, God will will favor me this month and they'll go to another church. Hallelujah. Troublemakers. Everybody say, stay away from them. They're all troublemakers. Well, I don't like what this one said. I don't like what this one said to me. I don't like the way they look at me. My God, get over yourself. You're a legend in your own mind. Stay away from people like that. Stay away from troublemakers. Come on, somebody shout amen. Turn around, look at somebody, say, I'm a lover, I'm not a fighter. Stay away from people that cause division. The devil is the author of division. When somebody comes to try to divide a church or a ministry, division always begins just with one individual. One bad, one bad egg. Are you listening to me? One heart that goes astray. Are you here? Say amen. If division starts with one person. It takes one person to cause a church split. It takes one person that wants preference over God's divine purpose. Shout amen, somebody. Tell somebody, stay away from troublemakers. Turn around, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, stay away from them. Turn around, tell somebody else, say, I will protect the unity of this church. Romans chapter 12, my Lord, I'm on fire. Can you feel it? I say, can you feel it? Romans chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. Amen. Praise God. I said, praise God. Paul said in Romans 12, everything I'm preaching is in the Bible. If I could put a chapter and a verse on it, you should pay attention. He says, love must be sincere. Say that together. Love must be sincere. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what's good. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourselves. (laughs) Honor one another above yourselves. Well, what's in it for me? That's the devil's mentality. That's, that's an antichrist spirit. Jesus did not come to be served. He came as a servant. He said, Father, let your will be done. Not my will. Jesus prayed this before the cross. He said, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say, what is the priority and what is the, what is the lineup of a Christian? Let me tell you the way it should be. It should be God first. It should be others second. And it should be you in third position. That's what the Bible teaches. Oh, really? You go to the mall to buy yourself stuff. When was the last time you went? out and bought somebody else something nice. Come on, somebody, shout amen. Somebody shout, I will love my church. I will love my church family. I will stay away from troublemakers. Somebody shout hallelujah. It says honor one another. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Somebody shout hallelujah. You got to lay down your pride if you're going to prioritize God's purpose. Everybody say we've been called to live in love and to live in unity. We've been called not to compete, not to compare, not to criticize, not to complain, not to criticize one another. We've been called to compliment one another. Can somebody shout amen? Look at what Jesus said. Again, in Matthew 18, I'm not going to go through the whole verse. It says this. He says, when we get together, this is what it says. When we get together, 
When we come together in a spirit of agreement, when we join together in love and in unity, Jesus said, that's when I show up. And that's when miracles happen. Because the key to unity, amen, it, you got to understand that the key to unity is love people and treat people the way you want to be treated. Say amen. The people that always say to me, Pastor, you know, I was offended. I left the church. Somebody said something that offended me. But how many times have you said something that offended people? See, we're always so quick to see the speck in our brother's and sister's eye, but we don't understand we got a log in our own eye. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you got a forest in your own eye, and you're looking at the speck in your brother's eye. But if we're going to be the church, we've got to come together in love. We've got to get in one mind and one accord. Lord, we got to forgive people. And instead of being quick to judge, come on, somebody shout, we should be quick to love. Can somebody say amen right now? I'm telling you right now, you think you need prophecy? No, you need to repent for living a loveless life. Everybody shout in one accord. Everybody get on your feet and shout in one accord. Turn around, tell somebody we're better together. Listen. This year, be the key. You be the key to unity in this ministry. Do not be the cause of discord. Romans chapter 15, I'll be done in 10 minutes. Paul said this, Romans 15, may the God who gives endurance. Everybody say the God who gives endurance and encouragement. Give you the same attitude of mind toward each other. That Christ Jesus had. Accept one another then just as Christ accepted you. So you want everybody to be a, a, a copycat like you. Phony like you. He said, no, 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 no. Accept one another the way I accepted you. Some of you wish you had a cloning machine. Want everybody to be like you. God didn't call you to fit in, first of all, in this world. He called you to take over. Just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Look at Ephesians 4. It says that all Christians, somebody say all Christians. How many Christians do I have here today? Well, in a few moments, those of you that do not raise your hand, you will have an opportunity to become a Christian. I'm not talking about becoming a religious fanatic. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm talking about becoming saved, born again, washed in the cleansing blood of Jesus. God taking out a stony heart, putting a heart in flesh, and writing your name in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. This is not a religious church. They're all around here, but this ain't one of them. This is a church where the gospel is preached in power and in demonstration. Paul said in Romans 1, 16, 17, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For those of you that are new to the ministry, let me tell you this. It was the religious people that put Jesus on the cross. Jesus was not religious. I'm not religious. This church is not religious. It is our relationship is born of the spirit of God. Shout somebody in the house of God. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter number 4. Tell somebody, the religious put Jesus on the cross. Why would you want to become a religious person? God's looking for those that have radical faith and radical love and radical obedience that will live a life of reckless abandonment and pursue him with all their heart. Seven things all Christians have in common. Seven things quickly. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4, look at the screen if you don't have a Bible, please pay attention. Do not be the cause of discord, be the agent of unity. Seven major things in common that Christians have. The Bible says there's one body. Everybody say one body. Everybody say one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope. When you were called, everybody say one Lord. Say one faith. Say one baptism. You, some of you don't even know this. You need to learn this year. You need to develop. Say one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Everybody say one God. Here we go. One God. One God. One God. Well, there are many ways to God. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way. 
Jesus said, I am the truth. Jesus said, I am the life. You can hug an oak tree all you want. You're going to go right to hell when you die. I'm here to tell somebody you can worship a cow. I'd rather eat a cow. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can pray to a cow. I'm going to have a sirloin steak today, and I'm going to eat a cow. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way. Mary is not the way. Muhammad is not the way. Buddha is not the way. Kevin McGinnis is not the way. Religion is not the way. I I am the way. Shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. One God. Smile. Your face might crack. One God. One Father of all who's over all. Who's over all and through all and in all. Seven things all Christians have in common. Number one, say this together. We are one body. No such thing as a white church, black church, Hispanic church, Asian church. There's one body. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, when I get to heaven, I hope there's all whites or all black or all Hispanic. Well, you're not going to heaven, first of all, because you're bound by prejudice. And there's a place in hell for you. Are you listening to me? Let me tell you what God's going to do. When you get to heaven and you walk up to your mansion, God's going to make sure in your community, next door is your neighbors, those that you couldn't stand. Everybody shout, we're one body. Jesus doesn't have multiple bodies. He, he just has the church. Shout amen. Number two, say we have one spirit. We've been all given, thank God, the same Holy Spirit at salvation. Number three, shout we share one hope. Everybody say it together. We share one hope. Shout if you know that hope. The second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He didn't stay dead. He was resurrected. Can you say amen? He resurrected on the third day, triumphant and victorious over all the power of hell. And that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside every one of you that believe. So even though you have a down day, you, get, you may be down, but you bounce back up because you can't stay discouraged and diseased and defeated. Somebody shout hallelujah. He was resurrected on the third day and this is our hope he went back to heaven and he promised us he's coming back again I said that's our blessed hope if you don't shout about that you definitely are not a Christian he's coming back again he shall return for you and me Titus said looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ Paul said the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those of us that are alive and remain we shall be caught up everybody say one body say one body some of you want to change your body I don't blame you one body one spirit one hope my God we share the hope of the second coming say we have one Lord Say, we have one Lord. We don't worship multiple gods. Some of my friends were asked on television, is Jesus the only way? And they caved under the pressure. There's only one Lord. There's only one God. There's only one way to heaven. Well, I, that is not culturally correct. Pastor, that is not a good political point or persuasion. I didn't come today to be politically correct. I didn't come today for you to even like me. I came here today to stand up and preach the word of God. And if some of you are honest, most of the preachers you follow, they're always telling you what you like and what you want to hear. Paul said, run away from those people because they are not shepherds of your soul. They've been sent by Satan to lead you astray by preaching what you want to hear. I feel like preaching, Pastor Olga. Amen. Gina, nudge your mother. See if she's still awake. We have one baptism. Everybody say one faith. Our faith is contained in one book. Say my faith is in the Bible. Everybody say my faith is in the Bible. Number six, I'm almost there. Don't worry, you'll eat lunch. You don't need another meal anyway. We have one baptism. Say one baptism. 
We don't have to be rebaptized every time we fall short. We don't have to come to the altar and get saved every time we commit a sin. You don't got to get rebaptized. Somebody shout amen. Somebody came to me the other day and said, Pastor, I want to be rebaptized. What they do not know, when I get them in the tank, I'm going to hold them under the water for 15 minutes. Are you listening to me? Somebody shout amen. Put a smile on your face. You know what I learned? If you're a Christian and you're going to make the days ahead, if you don't laugh, you'll never last in life. Everybody shout one baptism. Everybody shout we have one God who knows all things, sees all things, is with us at all times. Shout amen. Not only are the seven things that we all have in common as believers, Jalen, but the Bible says we also share, everybody say the same salvation. Everybody say the same mercy, the same grace. We all have the same forgiveness. And those of us that are believers, we all share the same future. We will spend eternity in heaven forever. So stop judging everybody and start loving everybody. Stop being quick to judge and be quick to love. Say amen. Can I give you a few more minutes? John 17. Well, I never heard this before. Read your Bible. You'll find out I'm telling you the truth. You'll find out that in this church, you'll hear the truth. Not in the church you came from where the man's collar was on backwards. John 17, 21 says this. Are you hungry for the word? Are you hungry for love? Are you hungry for unity? I pray for them. John 17, 21. All to be joined together as one. All joined together. As one, say all join together, as one. Jesus is speaking here, people. Even as you and I, the Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us so the world will recognize that you sent me five times before Jesus died. Five times. Five times in one scripture. Five times in John 17, he prayed this prayer. Make them one. Make us one. Make them one, the body, the church, as we are one. Everybody always wants to come up to me and tell me what God's showing them. First of all, God's not weird and God's not mystical. People always say, Pastor, God's doing this through my life. And that's wonderful that God's using you in a powerful way. But I want to know what is God doing in you this year? Not what is he doing through you. Not that you can keep bragging. What is God doing in you? Is he changing your heart? Is he changing your motives? Are you prioritizing God's purpose for your life? Somebody shout amen. amen. If you're a Christian, it's your job to build people up. Jesus didn't come to please himself. And if you want to be like Jesus, then put the needs of others ahead of your own. And learn to become a servant. We should live. We should look. And we should love like Jesus. We should look, live, and love like Jesus. You, how many Christians do I have? Let me see your hand. It's all about many of you. It's all just all about you. But a Christian should live, look, and love like Jesus. Even in worship, we're here worshiping today. What a powerful job the team did today. Let's give them a hand of encouragement. Come on, encourage somebody else. You always want encouragement. Then sow a seed of encouragement. Encourage somebody else. You know that worship is a waste? You know worship is pointless if we're not living out the lyrics? I love you, Lord, with my whole heart. I worship you, God. We sang, how great is our God today, really. Worship is a waste if you're not living out the lyrics. Preaching to people is a waste if you're not living the message. Because people will either be drawn to Jesus by your lifestyle and your testimony, 
or they'll be turned off by your lifestyle and your testimony. Clap your hands all over the building. Let's give the Lord praise together. This year, recognize the value of every person. Everyone in this room has value. Those watching me, you have value. Recognize everyone's value. Number two, focus on what's important. Number three, love each other. Number four, live by faith. For the sake of unity, let's not allow differences to divide us this year. Let's focus on what's important. Let's learn to love each other as Jesus loves us. Let's focus on what unites us rather than what divides us. Somebody shout aloud, amen. amen. But love is the key component. Love is the key component that empowers unity. Say that with me. Love, love is the key component that empowers unity. You cannot be unified without love. Matthew 24, Jesus said something that was so awesome. I shared this on Thursday. He compares Christians with the eagle. He compares Christians Everybody say, Jesus compares Christians with eagles. He calls Christians eagles. He said, wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will gather. Jesus was talking about referencing his own body. There's something even more interesting in Deuteronomy 14. He talks about the dietary laws that the Hebrews had under the old covenant. And under the old covenant, the Hebrew law, they, everybody say they were forbidden they were forbidden to eat certain food under the law. How many of you glad we're not bound by the law? How many of you glad that when we sin, we don't have to cut off our arm? I, was, I thought about it the other day. If I had to cut off my arm, how would I pick up the fork? <laughs> Talks about the dietary laws of the Hebrew people. That was a joke in that. Hi, in that. Good to see you. Talks about the dietary laws of the Hebrews. He said there were some birds that you could eat and there were other birds that you could not eat. Isaiah refers to believers as eagles. For they that wait upon the Lord, Isaiah 40, 31, shall renew their strength. They shall what? Mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Somebody say amen. amen. But the, there were certain birds. He forbidden them not to eat the eagle. Because he likens you and I to the eagle. Paul put it this way. He said in the New Testament, let me come out of Deuteronomy. Let me come out of the Old Covenant. Let me move into the New Covenant. If we have been referred by God as eagles, if Isaiah referred to us as eagles, if Jesus considered us as eagles, hear me. Listen to what Paul said. Stop devouring one another. Stop devouring one another. Tell somebody, don't eat the eagles. Stop eating one another. Stop devouring one another. Stop destroying people with your tongue. Stop filleting people with your tongue. Stop gossiping. Stop ruining people's lives with your mouth. Everybody shout, this year, I'm not going to devour the eagle. I'm not going to talk about my brother. I'm not going to talk about my sister. Pay attention. Let God heal your brain. He says, do not devour one another. He says, love one another. John 13, 34, just as I loved you, give God praise in the house of God. Tell everybody in your life. Tell those in your families, those that do not even love God, those that want nothing to do with Jesus, tell them, say, I love you, and I'm for you, but I'm against sin. I'm against sin. Jesus died for the sinner. Jesus even sat with the sinner, but he never sinned with the sinner. God didn't save you to be everyone's judge. He commanded you to love. How many of you made up your mind God's going to be first in your life this year? Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's going to be first. Is he first? 
Come on, come on, shout at me if he's first. Shout, he's first, he's first. He's first in my family. Oh, he is? Okay. He's first in your finances? Oh, we'll see. He's first. He's first with your talents. He's first with your treasures. He's first with your resources. Is he first with your worship? Is he the first thing you think about in the morning? The Bible says if you seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things, everything else he will add to you. Listen to me. It is so simple. We trip over it. If you will just put God first, if you put God at the forefront of your life, if you let God rule the throne of your heart, everything you desire will come into your life. In one accord. In one accord. I've seen phenomenal churches destroyed by the tongue. People lying about other people. Stop being so quick to believe the worst about people. Let's believe the best. Love believes the best. I said, love believes the best. I believe because of this corporate fast. I believe today because of our faith, our sacrifice, our love, and our obedience to God over these last 21 days. I, be I believe supernatural things are getting ready to happen. I believe miracles are about to be unlocked and released upon the people of God. Is that you? Stand with me if that's you. Stand with me if that's you. They were in the right place. They were at the right place at the right time. Then the fire came and everything changed. Today, whether you know it or not, some of you think, well, I'm just going to go to church. No, no, no. God drew you here today by his spirit. You're here today because Jesus loves you. You're here today because somebody cared enough about you to share with you the love of Jesus. Somebody was willing to tell you the truth. Even in jeopardy of offending you, with every head bowed and every eye closed in this room, this is why I'm alive today. This is my purpose for living. This is my mission upon the earth. With all the days and years God's going to give me, even before his coming, I believe God's going to use all of us to make an impact on this earth for eternity. I'm going to ask everyone to close your eyes, everyone to bow your head. You're here today and you say, Pastor Kevin, I heard the word. I may not understand it, but I heard the word today. I heard your message. I listened to your sermon. And I believe today there are things in my life that I need to get right. There is sin in my life. First of all, as your head is bowed and your eyes are closed and you're examining your life, you're taking a good look at your heart. I want you to know today, the Bible says that Jesus said, I'm willing that none perish, but that everybody comes to repentance. For Jesus came to seek and save the lost. That's you. If you have never publicly come to Jesus, if you've never publicly repented of your sin, if you've never publicly confessed that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, I'm talking to you, and this is why I'm here today. I'm here today to tell you the truth. And Jesus said it, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. With every head bowed and nobody looking around being nosy, but look at your own life. Honestly, if you were to die today, if you were to die today, what gives you the right to claim and declare that you're going to heaven? Because good people do not go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven. Sinners do not go to heaven. The Bible says every one of us, myself included, were born sinners. The only way you become redeemed is when you accept the sacrifice that was provided on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. You may, have, you may have gone to religious classes. You may have been christened. That means nothing before God. The only thing that matters to God is that you're saved that you're redeemed that you're justified by faith as your head is bowed and your eyes are closed I'm here to tell you today now it takes a real man and a real woman to make this decision people that are bound by pride people that are bound by arrogance can't even admit that there's sin in their life and the Bible says the only one that God will resist is the proud but he gives grace unto the humble God says I reject proud people he said I accept sinners that's why I die he said it doesn't
doesn't no matter what, you, what you've done, what sins you've committed. He said, there's not one sin too big that my blood cannot cover. Today you're getting ready to come. Many of you that have been raised in church are about to make a rededication to the Lord. I'm here to tell you, he said, if you come to me, I will never turn you away if you come. But you've got to come. You've got to make a decision. Am I going to go to heaven or am I going to go to hell? Am I going to be saved from death and destruction and eternal ruin? Or am I going to make a decision for Christ, obey him and live in righteousness? Get ready to lift your hand. I'm going to count to three. If you want to know beyond the shadow of death that when you breathe your last on earth that you'll take your first breath in heaven, get your hand ready. I'm counting to three. One, I'm counting down to eternity. It's life and death, heaven and hell. Where will you spend it? Number three, the Bible says, the Bible says I set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. I've given you the ability to choose. Those that have their heads bowed and their eyes closed, that is listening to me today, God will not force you to come. God will not force you to repent because he is a gentleman. He has given you a free will. You either will to serve God or today you say not now, maybe another day. That is a direct rejection of the cross of Christ. That is a direct rejection and an intentional no that God is noting today so that when you stand before him on eternity's morning, he will remind you of this moment that you said I don't want you. Not now. And you rejected him. But if you want my prayer and you want to be saved, understand it takes a decision and a response. Get those hands ready. One, two, three. You want to be born again. You want to be saved. You want to make sure there's no sin in your life. You want to know that you're going to heaven. Lift your hand all the way up. Care less what anybody else thinks. See, when you're desperate, you do desperate things. When you really hungry, nothing can stop you. When you know the word of God is true, if you received and you believed what I preach today, you should lift your hand to heaven and say, I want Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to begin a new life with Christ. When I leave this world, I want to spend eternity in the pavilion of God's glory forever. But those of you that say no, not now, another day, the Bible says, the Bible says you have rejected eternal life. The Bible says these things are written in the word that you may know that you have eternal life. These things are written in the word that you may know. Somebody said, well, I think so. Why would you die and not know so? When you breathe your last, wouldn't you want to know for sure where you're going to go forever? You can know today, not by joining a church, not by shaking a preacher's hand, but by praying a prayer from your heart. Last call, throw your hand up if you want my prayer. If you want my prayer, lift your hand. Hold it all the way up. Let everybody know that you're ready. You could care less what people think. You want God's approval and blessing over your life for the rest of your life. Those of you that have your hand raised, quickly come and stand with me. I want to pray for you. Quickly. Don't ask anybody. Just move. Just move on out. Come and stand with me if you want my prayer. Come and stand with me if you want my prayer. Quickly come. Come now. Come right now. The Bible says everyone Jesus called to follow him, he called them publicly. Every one of the disciples called publicly. You gotta come to Jesus. You gotta come to him today. You gotta come now while you can. You gotta come right now. Quickly come. Anyone else? Anyone else? Somebody right now, you're feeling you're feeling a pull. That's the Holy Ghost. Right now, just leave the people alone. They're okay. Just leave them alone, Brother Rick. Brother Rick, leave them alone. Understand that is the Holy Ghost drawing you. Understand that is the Spirit of God attracting you right now attracting you right now. You gotta come. You gotta come. I'm gonna wait 10 more seconds. Well, well, I'm a good person. I just told you from the Bible, good people do not go to heaven. He says, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath the Son hath not life. These things are in that you may know that you have eternal life. Anybody else, come. There are people here today, you need a miracle in your life. You need to get the miracle worker in your heart first. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart right now. Hallelujah. Come. If I was you, I would run. While you still can, while you're still breathing, I would come. I would come right now. Everybody pray all over this room. Hallelujah. 
or anyone else. Everybody's praying in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost, in one accord. Everybody in one accord, in one accord. You never know when it's your final opportunity to get your life right with Christ. You never know. You just never know. Wouldn't you want to know for sure that there's not one sin separating you from eternal life? Everybody lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel to wait 60 more seconds for someone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You'll never be able to blame this preacher. You'll never be able to point your finger at this church and say you didn't have an opportunity. This is your opportunity. Come to Jesus. Talking to people right now as everyone is in prayer. Those that have secret sins. You think nobody knows? Nobody may know, but God sees everything. God sees everything. He knows everything. You can't fool God. Pride says, I fooled everyone. No, you're the fool. Because God is all-knowing, all-seeing. We serve an all-wise God. Anyone else? I want everyone to bow your head with me. I want everyone across this room to join hands with someone. People are more afraid of germs than they are hell. somebody by the hand this is serious business this is life and death this is heaven or hell for many As your head is bowed and your eyes are closed examining your own life because you will stand before God by yourself when you die you will not be there with your wife or your husband you will not be with your children or your dog. You're going to be by yourself. And you will have to give an account with your life. You need to think long and hard about the decision you're making, the lifestyle you're living. Because the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in destruction. It may seem right to you, but Proverbs 14 says the end is death. There's a price that sin pays. The wages of sin is death, but the bountiful gift of God is eternal life. Joining hands, everyone bow your head. I, please, bow your head in reverence. I want everybody to say this. Say, Father. Say it out loud. Father God, I come to you now in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus. I repent of every sin in my life. I ask you to cleanse me by your precious blood. Your Bible says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and that you were raised from the dead, on the third day, if I would believe that prayer with all of my heart, I would be saved. You promised me in your word, if I confess my sin, you are faithful, you are just to forgive me and cleanse me from all my sin. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for eternal life. Now close your eyes as you continue to hold that hand. I want you to say this right now because when you accept the name of Jesus, when you accept Christ into your life, he gives you power and he'll give you authority.
So now you need to declare by your faith with your authority in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Say, I declare and I decree in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, you have no power over my life. You have no power over my home. You have no power over my heart. You have no power over my will. I surrender my will to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I will love Jesus. I will serve him. I will put him first for the rest of my life. Now everybody lift your hands and thank him and give him praise. Release a sound. Give him praise and release a sound. Release a sound in one mind and one accord. Release a sound to God. Release a sound to God. I want everybody to look at me that's here. Some of you, this is a rededication. That's fine. But I want everybody that's here and those that have joined me online today, I want you to know that this is the most important decision. If you prayed that prayer, we want to hear from you. We would love to connect with you. But I want everybody here to know that this is the most important decision you've ever made. There's no, there's no greater decision you could ever make with your life. More important than a career, finding a husband, finding a wife, that's for this world. What you just did is forever, eternity. How many of you get that? Everybody get that? Amen. So I welcome all of you today to the family of God. Let's give them a great hand of welcome. God bless you. God bless you. You guys can go back to your seats. Give them a hand of encouragement. The next prayer I'm going to pray today before anyone leaves, I want to pray for people that need a miracle because I feel right now the faith. I feel the faith and I feel the flow of the miracle power of God. If you need healing in your body without reservation, quickly move this way. Quickly jump out of your row, move to the nearest aisle, come and join me down here. I would love to pray for you. I would love to pray for you. I would love to pray for you. I believe Jesus is still a healer. If you need healing, I want you to come quickly all around the room. All around the room. Everybody one line. One line across the front. Shoulder to shoulder. Side by side. Stand next to somebody. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want to pray for people today. I want to believe right now for miracles and signs and wonders. Anyone else? Anyone else? Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Anyone else? Say, Pastor, I need healing. I need a miracle. Then you need to be this way up here with me. You need to be up here. You need to come this way. There are other people that you need deliverance. Maybe it's addiction or alcoholism. Maybe it's prescription pills. Maybe it's perversion. Maybe you're battling a suicidal spirit. I want you to quickly jump out of your seat and come and join me. Somebody said, Pastor, is smoking cigarettes going to send me to hell? I said, no, it's just going to make you smell like you've been there. You're not going to go to hell for smoking cigarettes. But God wants to set you free so that you can live a long life, that your lungs can function freely. Amen. Anyone else? Come. You need prayer for anything. Now's the time. You need prayer for anything. Now's the time. It's not time to come to me after church say, I need prayer. Now's the time to come. If you need prayer, I would love to pray and agree with you. This is what this message is all about. Unify the power of one accord. Unity, the power of unity. Today, Jesus loves every one of you. Jesus loves every one of you, every one of you. Before God, you stand before him justified. So you need to understand that God does not want to withhold anything from you. That God desires to heal you more than you desire to be healed. Healing is the children's bread. I'm going to ask everyone in unison, in one mind and one accord, would you stand on your feet out there in the audience? If you care enough for people and you love people, why don't you stretch your hands towards those that are standing at this altar? If you're out there, those that are standing behind them, stretch your hand toward them. And I want you to begin to pray for them right now. Release and loose your faith. Pray and release and loose your faith right now. I want those of you that are here, if you have the ability to lift your hands, both hands, all the way up, not halfway, all the way up to heaven as you make contact with the powerful presence of God. When I come by, I'm going to lay hands on you. And all I want you to do is say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. That's all you got to say is I receive it. As I walk by, as we touch and agree in faith, I believe right now, Pastor Olga, as you walk with me, I believe that as we lay hands on these people, I believe this today. This is why we're here to serve people. I believe that when we lay hands on people because we love and care for you, 
I believe that when we pray for you, something extraordinary is getting ready to happen. Something extraordinary is getting ready to happen. When I begin to pray, uh, Brother Robbie, I just want you to lead us, and I want to lay hands, and I believe the healing power of God is in this place. Everybody lift your, everybody out there okay? Stretch your hands this way, and let's pray for those that need healing. Those that need healing. Those that need healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Chuck. Hallelujah. The Bible says, pray and anoint with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith would save the sick and the Lord will raise you up. God's going to do something extraordinary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's start over here. Hallelujah. Everybody out there, pray like you've got power. In the mighty name of Jesus, who is the head of the church, we pray now in the name of the Lord. We agree in faith believing. I command this precious sister to be healed, to be touched, to be delivered. Let her leave this place never the same. Never the same. Never the same in Jesus' name. Say, I receive it. In Jesus' name, we take authority over the spirit of fear. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Everybody in one accord, lift your voice all over this house. I pray now and I loose the mighty anointing of the Holy Ghost. I command every burden to come off her shoulders and blessing and breakthrough to be activated and be released. Say, I receive it. Say, I receive it in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, as they put you first, as they put you first this year, Lord, you said, us, you, said you promised you'd give us the desires of our heart. I pray now in the name of Jesus for blessing and breakthrough and victory in every circumstance. Be thou made whole. Be thou made whole in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command her to be whole. In the name of the Lord, Lord, you're a son. You said you're a son and shield. You give grace and glory. No good thing will you withhold from them that walk up rightly. In the mighty name of Jesus, as I lay hands on my sister, I thank you right now for a flow of power. Miracles like never before. Miracles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, as we lay hands on our sister. Lord, I thank you that you brought her a long way, a mighty long way. I thank you that the worst is over. Everybody out there, pray with power. Don't just sit there, stand there, pray. I pray now that I declare the worst is over and the best is yet to come. I break every chain. I reverse every curse. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the miracle power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we touch and agree. As me and my wife are praying, everybody in this room that's in agreement, stretch your hands and say, I agree. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, God's using all of us around this room and those online. We pray now from the top of her head to the tips of her toes. Resurrection power, resurrection life, strength, increase, strength, vitality. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your blessing upon Judy today. In Jesus' mighty name, she will get stronger. She will get stronger and stronger in you. In Jesus' name, right now, right now, I break every curse. Lord, I thank you right now that the curse of disobedience is being broken. I thank you right now that the blessing is beginning. I thank you that there's going to come a flow of power and a favor. Everybody stretch your hands. I rebuke every disease. I rebuke every malfunction, every malady, every infirmity. By the stripes of Christ, be thou made whole in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive it by faith, my friend. you got to receive it by faith for it to happen. In the name of Jesus, we thank you now, God, for complete healing, freedom, deliverance, spiritually, physically, financially. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, for my brother Mike, Lord, touch him. Lord, make him whole, completely for thy glory. Father, we give you the praise for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. And now we shout together all over this room as the family of God. We shout and we give God praise for every miracle in his life. Hallelujah. Right now, Lord, we thank you. We thank you right now. We command the blessing upon our sister today. Lord, set her free.
Set her free from all oppression. Set her free from all fear as well. I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Every burden be lifted. Every yoke be destroyed. Come on, pray, people. Come on, we're concluding 21 days of prayer and fasting. God's getting ready to do a miracle in your life. Miracles are getting ready to happen all over this room. Everybody right now, come on, I need to feel your faith in the name of Jesus. We renounce the works of the devil over her life. We renounce the plans of the enemy. The enemy will not sabotage her in this season. We pray blessing. We pray new birthing in areas of our life spiritually. God, right now, deliver her now from all forms of fear. In Jesus' mighty name, now I command, I command it. I command healing now, healing now, healing now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, who is the head of Attractor's life, we pray now healing, that healing would consume her, that healing would overtake her body. I command her body to come into alignment with the word of God today, and by the stripes of Christ, be healed in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Lift your hands now. Lift your hands. Join hands with your wife. The two shall be come one. Lord, I thank you right now for the spirit of oneness, the spirit of unity. In the name of Jesus, we come into agreement, God, with Evelyn and Stuart today. Lord, we thank you for the work that you've done so quickly in their life. And Lord, I thank you now that there will be an acceleration of your blessing, an acceleration of your favor. Lord, I declare that every prayer request will turn to a praise report that you save her children. You save her children. That's her heart's cry. Save my family. Save my children. God, reveal yourself to them in a powerful way that they will not be able to deny that it was the hand of God at work. I speak healing to his lungs, healing to all respiration in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, pray with me. Pray with me, everybody. In the name of Jesus, I speak life, long life. I speak healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Miracles, signs and wonders. Miracles, signs and wonders. Miracles, signs and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. We reject it. We do not claim it. We do not claim sickness. We reject it. We rebuke it. We renounce it. We refuse it. I speak healing over my brother's body in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that he will speak. He will declare life. He will speak favor. He will declare restoration, even of health. Lord, you said in Isaiah 58, after we pray and fasted. You say that our health will spring forth speedily. I pray now for health to spring forth. I thank you that your hands on his life. You performed the greatest miracle. You've saved his soul. Now I ask you for the lesser miracle. Make him whole. Make him whole right now. Make him whole Lord, we refuse to be sick. We refuse to be infirm. Everybody out there, stretch your hands and pray with me. We refuse to die early. We refuse to go to an early grave. Lord, I thank you it is not your will that we die prematurely. But you said long life. I said long life. I speak long life. I speak long life. For long life, you'll satisfy us and you'll show us your salvation. Everybody in this room, pray with all your might, with all your strength, the way people prayed for you. Pray for others. Love one another. Show how much you love them by praying. In Jesus' name, be healed in the mighty name of Christ. Completely delivered, completely free in the name of Jesus. We will not go backward, we will go forward. Today the chains of darkness are broken. Today the mind is cleansed by the powerful Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for Holy Ghost deliverance, Holy Ghost freedom in every area, in the mind, in the emotions. Lord, I thank you in his heart, his spirit, his body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you. Ho, 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 there it is. There it is. There it is. My God, my God, my God, my God. Receive it. I command you right now. I command the devil, take his hands off your life. Now, in the name of Hoshada, fire the Holy Ghost. 
You started it, now finish it. What you begin, you will complete. For you're the Lord, the work you started in us, Philippians 1, 6. You're faithful to finish it. We stand on your word. We put pressure on the word. We claim the word. We declare the word. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. We speak life. We speak healing. We speak freedom. We speak restoration. Come on, everybody, speak the word with me. Everybody stand if you can. Speak the word. Speak the word. We speak it over her, over her family. We claim right now, Julian, for the kingdom, that the call and purposes of God will come to pass, that he will not die. We claim his soul. We command him that he will fulfill his purpose. He will accomplish his assignment. He will walk into his destiny. Hear the prayer of this woman of God. Answer it. Expedite it. Accelerate it. My God, come on, everybody, pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we pray for Marlene, for her family in the name of Jesus. We declare the word of God. Lord, we thank you for complete healing financially, physically, spiritually, family, relationally, in every area. We take authority over every hindrance. Father, we bind the works of the enemy according to Matthew chapter 18. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We bind the plans of the enemy and we loose the blessing, the provision, the promises of God over this life in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody's praying with me. Everybody's agreeing with me. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we pray with our sister, we thank you right now for renewed strength. Lord, even as I quoted the verse on the eagle, she connected to it. And Lord, right now, I thank you. You're renewing her strength like the eagle. Lord, I thank you. She shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Lord, things that even she believed years ago, that her faith became weak. But Lord, I thank you now. You're increasing her faith. She's coming back stronger than ever before. You're renewing that hunger in her heart. Lord, I thank you right now. She's disciplining herself to seek you in this season of our life. Lord, those that she's burdened for. Lord, children that she's burdened for. Lord, I ask you right now to open the door that she'll speak the word. And Lord, people will respond to your call. I pray for my sister today, God, that you're healing her broken heart, her heart that is broken, her emotions that are so messed up. God, heal her today. Restore to her the joy that she once had. Restore Restore the joy of her salvation. Restore, renew a right spirit within it. Everybody stretch this way. Hands this way and pray. I want about 12 intercessors to walk with me and my wife. I want 12 intercessors to come and walk with me and my wife. Quickly, quickly move as the man of God speaks. Move as I speak. In the name of Jesus, I loose the provision of God. I break every curse and I release every blessing. Oh my God. My God, it's strong up here. In the name of Jesus, now I invoke the free favor of God. I invoke the blessing of God. I thank you right now for it. Right now, right now, right now, right now, throughout your body, I speak healing, life, vitality in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody pray. In the name of Jesus, I break every spirit off of her that man would try to place over her. Every word curse that has been spoken against her, her husband, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I speak healing over her body completely. It seems like she was healed and then she has reoccurring pain and symptoms. But today it's leaving once and, her and for all. As she stays under this anointing and covering, she will be completely free this year. She will go to another level in God. She will walk in new power and new authority. Heal her now in the name of Jesus. Sharebo Sande la Bakia, Raba Sande la Bosata la Bahia. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray now. We pray now for direction. We pray right now, God. She's asked you, God, I need direction this year. I need direction for my life. I don't want to make the same mistakes. God, I pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'd make the crooked places straight, that you'd raise every valley and level every mountain, that your glory would be revealed to her. Reveal your glory to everybody in this room. Lift both hands across the house. God,
God's about to reveal his glory because we're in one accord. God's about to show his power because we're united in love, in the spirit. Everybody in this room, you need God's favor. You need divine direction this year. Lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands. You're not going to make decisions because it's the good thing to do or because you think it's the smart thing to do. You're going to make decisions out of prayer. You're going to make decisions out of the divine purpose and plan of God. In the name of God, I speak health, I speak protection, and I speak provision. This is why we're here to pray and believe for people. Everybody stretch your hands up here from the front row to the last row. Everybody pray with all your might. Lift your voice in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you right now. I thank you right now that the enemy's plans are being canceled. Every assignment is being canceled of the enemy. Lord, even at an early age, at an early age, Lord, you know the enemy tried to kill her at an early age. The enemy had a plan, but God's purpose is greater than the devil's plan. As I pray for you today, every generational curse is being broken. Every plan of the enemy is being broken. Every plan is being canceled. And I pray the purpose and plan of God over you. I pray right now healing emotionally, healing financially, healing physically in the mighty name of Jesus. As you put God first, God says there's nothing that you will lack for. You will lack for nothing. It's not been easy, but you've made a decision. I'm going to put God first. People are against you, but you've pressed through the opposition because you want God's divine purpose. And the Lord said, get ready. Everything's about to open. Doors are about to open. My God, I feel this for everybody in this room. Doors are about to open. Doors are about to open. Doors that you could not open in previous years because you put God first. Doors are going to open all by themselves this year. Doors are about to open all by themselves. Everybody claim this in the building. Everybody lift your hands and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Doors Doors are about to open of their own accord. Like in Peter coming out of prison, the gates that led from the prison out to the city, they opened all by themselves. Right now in this room, as you lift your hands, some of you have been praying about decisions. You've been praying about financial decisions. You've been praying about careers. You've been praying about the next level and plan. God said, get ready, get ready, get ready. He said, I'm about to open doors that no devil can shut. And I'm about to shut doors that no devil can open. In the name of Jesus, I pray this over you and everybody in this room. Everybody shout. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak healing over her and her husband. In the name of Jesus, right now, God, I thank you for a touch of your hand. Mighty touch of your hand comes on her today. Your hand of favor. Lord, I thank you that she's heavy with favor. She's heavy. She's leaving this place with favor. Not fear. She's leaving with faith and favor. Today, I break off fear. I break off failure. I break off all anxiety. I break doubt and unbelief. I speak healing over my sister, healing over her family. I claim her loved ones for eternity. Lord, I thank you now. You're str you said you will strengthen our bones promise to strengthen our bones and you said because we're givers we will be like a well-watered garden whose waters fail not I pray now God that you're strengthening her bones in the name of Jesus hunt take hand both your hands on her arm this on both hands on her arm dr. Rose grab this other arm in the name of Jesus pray it now in Jesus name father right now for my friend Peter Lord I thank you that just one touch can change everything just one touch can change everything just one touch can change everything. Lord, he's got to make a decision that I'm going to go all the way with God. I'm going to leave everybody else behind. I'm going forward. Lord, give him the strength. Lord, give him the discipline to put you first and to seek you with all his heart. You've been asking God, God, I want more of you. And the Lord says, if you want more of me, you've got to give me all of you. He says, you'll find me when you seek me and search for me with all your heart. When I touch you today, my God, everybody in this room, pray like you're on fire. I said, pray like you're on fire. Everybody out there, if you've received prayer, I need you to keep praying. If I pray for you, pray for others. In the mighty name of Jesus, as I lay hands on you, generational curses of depression, 
generational curses of suicide is being broken off of you. There are people in your, in your family that died before their time. But the Lord says that will not be your testimony. For you're going to outlive the enemy. You're going to outlive what the enemy said. You're going to outrun and you're going to outlast the adversary. Everybody in this room shout hallelujah. Everybody pray, pray. Come on, push. I need everybody to push. Somebody's giving birth. And before you give birth, you got to give one last push. Right now in the name of Jesus, I loose him by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name. Come on, come on, come on. Brother Rick, be healed completely in the name of Jesus. Take it now by force. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pick her up. Pick her back up. The Lord says, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Where's Carissa? Where is she? Is she in the service? No, it's too late. Right now, in the name of Jesus, as I pray, the Lord says he's going to give you a divine strategy. The Lord says it's not going to happen the way you thought. I'm going to give you greater insight if I did not call you to do what everybody else is doing. I've called you. I've placed an anointing on you to be unique. And the Lord says, get ready. In ministry and in business, I'm getting ready to make things happen for you that you could have never made happen for yourself. Just stay right here. I'll be back. Come with me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, O Sharebando Salaya, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for right now, God, every bloodline curse, every bloodline that was passed down, the curse through the blood, we break it now. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, we break every stronghold, we break every vice, every addiction every controlling spirit, every lying voice. We silence the enemy now. We silence his voice in his life. And we speak right now the peace of God over him in the name of Jesus, in the mighty 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 name of Jesus. I hear you, Lord, what should I do? What should I do, Lord, this year? I don't want to do the same old, same old. But I want to move in the direction of your purpose, your plan, your assignment for my life. The Lord says today he's lifting off of you all frustration. There's been a spirit of frustration that's been upon you. And the Lord says today he's lifting that off of you, that old, old frustration. That frustration because you try to make things happen. And the Lord says, as long as you rest, I can't, as long as you work, I can't rest. But if you begin to trust me and rest, I'll begin to work in your life and in your situation. The Lord said, get ready, get ready. There's an avalanche of blessing. There's an avalanche. If I was you, I would jump up all over this house and take it. There's an avalanche of blessing, an avalanche. My God, the dam is getting ready to break and there's about to be a supernatural flood of blessing. It's going to blow your mind what God's going to do. The Lord says, the Lord says, get ready. I'm about to set you aside. I'm about to raise you up. And the Lord says it's going to require consecration, sanctification, complete holy living. The Lord says no room for compromise. The Lord says as I get ready to elevate, I consecrate. Before there's elevation, there's consecration. And the Lord says today, the Lord says today, there's going to be periods of fasting and prayer that I'm going to call you to. But nobody else may be seeking God and fasting. The Lord says, I'm going to draw you away, and I'm going to set you apart. You will not isolate yourself. 
but in the time, your pri private time, you'll seek God. And the Lord says, get ready. I'm about, I'm about to create in you what I've called and the reason why you were birthed and born to do and accomplish. The Lord said, get ready. This is the year. This is the year of the unfolding of my plan in your life. Everybody's praying. In the name of Jesus, I invoke the blessing of heaven. I invoke the blessing of heaven. I impose the kingdom in this life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you said through the laying on of hands, I can bless. Therefore, I bless my sister and what you bless Everybody lift your hands. People have tried to curse people in this room. And the Lord says, what I bless, nobody can curse. What I bless, nobody can curse. What I bless, nobody can curse. Now, you can bring a curse on your own life by disobedience and intentional rebellion to God's word. But the Lord says, when I bless, nobody can curse. I bless you today, daughter of God. I bless you today, woman of God. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I command you to be completely healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I command your body to be free from all malfunction. I command you to get stronger and stronger. Oh, there's all right. Everybody lift your hands and praise them. That lady with the white jacket, tell her to come here. Come here. What's her name? Julie, I think, right? Julie, stop right there. The Lord says you're getting ready to turn the page. He said, Lord, how long am I going to stay in this season like of struggling, struggling emotionally, even physically? But the Lord said, get ready. He says, get ready for the dawning of a new day. He says, weeping is endured for a long night, but joy is coming in the morning. You have such a precious spirit, such a great heart. You're grateful for what God's done since you've been coming. But the Lord says, you haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything yet. People have taken advantage of you. They've taken advantage of your goodness because they see that you have a generous heart and they've used you and they've taken advantage of you. But the Lord says, I'm about to give you a double. I'm about to give you double. Come here. I'm about to give you double for your shame. I'm about to give you a double portion of blessing. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said from this day, the Lord says there is a cleansing. That's the word he's given me. There's a cleansing that's taking place in your life. The Lord said there are some people that have been leeches, but the Lord says today you're going to shake them off. The Lord says today, the things that have been draining you are being cut off of your life. And the Lord says, get ready for an infusion of strength, an infusion of life. Everybody with me? Come on. An infusion of vitality. And the Lord says, you're about to see every battle turn in your favor. Oh, Pastor Chuck, come here. Lift your hands. You're walking into healing. You're walking into healing. Ho, 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 ho. Masheda Bahaya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Step out. Step out. The Lord's heard your cry. Tap her quickly. Step out. The Lord heard your cry for your children. I see you praying for children. I say you praying for kids. And the Lord said, get ready. It's getting ready to turn. The Lord said, it's getting ready to turn. It seems like there's been one attack after another attack. But today, I want you to spin around because that's what's getting ready to happen. Everything's getting ready. Keep turning. Keep turning. Don't stop. Keep turning. Keep turning. God said everything's getting ready to turn around. In the financial realm, it's turning around. In your family, it's turning around. In the name of Jesus, I also speak healing to your blood. Complete healing. Oh, my God. See what happens when we come in one accord? See what happens when we unite together? Is Christina here? 
Christina, come here. God's healing you today. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. You're walking into it. Your entire, the entire area, the, the, the reproduction, the digestion, everything's being healed today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When I touch you, the Lord says, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Lose your faith now. Get ready. Expect. When I touch you right now, the Lord says you're getting ready to break through. You are about to break through every attack emotionally. You are getting ready to break through every diabolical scheme and strategy of the enemy because this is the year that you're getting ready to discover that all the hell you went through was for this moment of your life. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. My God, it's a two-for-one deal. Terry, come on. Terry, come here. Let me pray for you. Quickly come. Today's the last day you're going to struggle in certain areas of your life. Lift your hands right now. The Lord says today every curse, every single curse, the Lord has broken things off of you since you've been coming. But today when I lay hands on you, the power of God's going to go through you. And God is going to blow your mind. You're going to be amazed what God's going to do through you, Terry. Because a lot of things you didn't know until you came to this church. But when I lay hands on you today, the Lord says the curse is going to stop and the blessings are going to begin. And you're not even going to be able to keep up with it. Everywhere you turn, there's going to be a blessing. You turn around, another blessing, another side of the, another breakthrough, and another miracle. God said, get ready. Your life is going to be like a whirlwind for the good. I see a whirlwind. Get ready. Everything's getting ready to be released. Things are being unlocked. There's a flood of favor coming to you. There's a flood of victory coming to you. The Lord said, I'm breaking all fear, inferiority, and insecurity off of you. In the name of Jesus, and when I touch you today, there's going to be a holy desire that's going to be birthed in you. There's going to be a hunger that's going to be activated in you. But when I pray for you today, the Lord said everything that the enemy has planned and those that are scheming in darkness, the Lord says the plans of the enemy are about to recoil in his face for no weapon formed against you, my God. Share, my God, you better jump in this place. You better jump, you better jump, you better jump. You better jump, put the enemy under your feet. You better put them under your feet. No weapon formed against you, Terry, shall prosper. When I lay hands on you, I break every curse and every blessing. My God. Give me four men full of the Holy Ghost. Four men full of the Holy Ghost. Lay hands on them. The glory's in the house. One accord. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Somebody cry out to him for your families. Somebody cry out to him for your families. Somebody this year is going to get one idea that's going to bring you millions into your hands. One idea. God said this is going to be a year of innovation and insight. Somebody's going to develop a technology that nobody else has. Favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God's going to flow like never before, like never before, like never before, like never before, like never before. Come here, Alex. Alex, come here. Stand right over here in front of me. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. The Lord said, get ready for triple favor this year. Triple. Triple blessing. Come here, Tiara. The Lord says he's joining you guys together in the spirit of agreement. You both love each other, and you both love this church. But the Lord said there has to come a spirit of agreement. A spirit of agreement. Make sense? 
The Lord says today when I lay hands on you, every divisive spirit of the enemy is going to be broken off of this marriage. And the Lord said, get ready. There's, this is the year of triple harvest. Even in the financial realm, the Lord says, get ready. The Lord says, get ready. The Lord says, the barn is too small. The barn is too small. The barrel is too little. God says, get ready. There's about to be an overflow. An overflow of abundance. An overflow of money. An overflow. An overflow of favor. Lift your hands. You could claim it too out there. Overflow in the name of Jesus. Overflow. When I touch you, the Lord says, get ready. Alex, the Lord says, as you draw closer to God, he says, and you make a decision to put God first in every area of your life. The Lord says, get ready. He's about to give you a hunger for him that you never had before. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak healing over your body. There'll be no more reoccurring attacks against your health. In the name of Jesus. And the Lord says, you've seen some victories with your son, but you haven't seen the completion of it. But I believe it's coming. several here today you were afraid to come forward God's going to heal you right there God's going to heal you right there everybody lift your hands in the name of Jesus not one person will leave this place the same way they came in Jesus name several here today you think the enemy is behind it thinking that you're supposed to establish and build your own ministry the Lord says no I've given you gifts and I've drawn you to this ministry to serve in this ministry God did not call you to build your own platform on social media he sent you to this house to serve and bless multitudes of people around the world don't get it twisted you've been distracted get back on assignment get back on track I want to pray for that, ju- that young man with the white t-shirt. I want him to come. He's right behind you. Yes, the, he's right behind you. Come. Come. Does he speak English? He does? See? Prende. What's your name? What is it? What's your name? Huh? I can't hear you. Joseph. Talk, talk, talk. I didn't understand what you're saying. You're talking so fast. Come here. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. You are who God created you to be. You are who God created you to be. The enemy has lied to you that you need to become somebody else. The Lord says, I've created you in my image and likeness. Today, I break every perverted stronghold off of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I need everybody right now, every man, lift your hands this way. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke every unclean spirit. I rebuke every spirit of hell. I will not embarrass you. I could say a lot more. But the Lord says today you're leaving this place free, completely free, with natural affections and normal desires. In the name of Jesus, the enemy has tormented you and he has plagued you with lies. And the enemy almost won. But today the devil's lost because I cut off the plans of the enemy. Shout! No, I said shout! No, I said shout!
you believe this is your year of revival, this is your year of miracles, this is your year of restoration, this is your year of household salvation, I need you to jump up and shout. Shout for the salvation of your husband. Shout for the salvation of your children. Shout for the salvation of your son. Shout for the salvation of your daughter. Shout for the salvation of your grandchildren. Shout. Everybody shout. I curse the transgender agenda. Anybody still believe in marriage between a man and a woman? Anybody still believe on Long Island for justice for all? Anybody still believe that to murder children is a sin? Does anybody still believe that we ought to be pro-life? not pro-choice for the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy but I've come Reggie put the camera down today's your day lift your hands I cancel and I break every perverted spirit in the name of Jesus, the Lord says he's pleased with you. But there are things like a web that a spider spins. There are things that the enemy's tried to still place and things that still need to be uprooted in your life. But when I lay hands on you today, God says not only are you going to another level, you're about to take other people with you to another level. Because the Lord says he's heard your cry and he's seen your tears. And the Lord said, get ready. I'm about to raise you up as you remain faithful and focused and disciplined. I will use you in this ministry to rescue others that were ending their life. Everybody shout now. Bring me the table. It's going to require more than one person. All right, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Right there, put it down. It's almost center. I like it center. Hold on. Anybody have a tape measure? That's a joke. God's going to prepare a table for you this year in the presence of all of your enemies. We've put God first. January, we've given God the first of the year. 21 days. How many of you are praying and fasting with us? Parents, I'm going to say this to you. Do not be so selfish because your lifestyle is affecting and destroying your children that are watching you. Lead by example. Remain standing. Everybody, please stand with me. Today we're going to honor God with our first, in our first fruits, with our financial, our best. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, honor God with your first fruits offering. Your barns will be filled with plenty in your cup. Your vats will overflow. What we're going to do this year is going to unlock the blessing for the rest of the year. Let me say that with me. What I do today with my first fruit is going to unlock and set the stage for every blessing. This is very serious, people. Say every blessing that comes into my life this year. See, you determine it, not God. God says in Ezekiel, he said, when you come before me with your first fruits offering, he said, a blessing. Everybody say, a blessing. a blessing. A blessing will rest over your house for that year. A blessing will rest over your house. See, I, I, I don't need, I don't, I'm not believing for myself this year. I'm believing for others. Love is concerned. When you love people, you're concerned about other people. 
God first, others second, I'm third. When we give our first fruits, we're going to be able to reach more souls than we've ever reached in the history of this church. Somebody shout amen. amen. See, when giving, when it's time to give and worship in our giving, that's not the time to get nervous and hold back. That's the time to really engage and really believe and say, this is going to be the greatest year I've ever had financially. The greatest year. My broke days are ending. The struggle is over. I'm ready for overflow. Lift your hands. I declare it right now. Overflow in every area of your life this year that the Lord is your shepherd. You will lack for nothing. You will not lack for health. Say amen. You will not lack for peace. Say amen. You will not lack for mercy. Say amen. You will not lack for victory. Say amen. You will not lack for favor. There are three people that are watching. Remain standing. You might even be in this room. You've got a bad report from the doctor. But the Lord said it's getting ready to turn around. It's going to turn around. Shout, it's turning around for me. Shout it out. It's turning around for me. The first fruit is the best. When cattle was born, the first fruit went to the Lord. I want everybody today that you need an envelope for your first fruits offering. Just stand where you are. Hold your hand up. We're going to bring envelopes across the room. Remain standing, everyone, please. Unity in giving. First in prayer. First in family. We talked about obedience talked about the power of fasting we talked about don't just throw anything in there it'll be the same old year as last year don't just throw anything in that envelope I hope every one of you have prayed over this this is very serious to God you keep complaining about what you don't have and you'll continue in the same cycle until you break it by your faith and obedience everybody online that's watching. You're connected to us. I got people watching me right now. I feel it in my spirit in Queens. The Lord says you better sow a first fruits offering for your own good. What are you expecting this year? How many of you expecting great things? Say amen. amen. Then sow that first fruits today. You're giving electronically? Do it. All the ways to give to God are on the screen. If the table is blocking your view, just stand and you can see how to do it electronically from your phone. But remember, God says, when you bring the first fruits before me, a blessing for that year will rest on your house. Honey, you giving by envelope? Let somebody go get it for you. I want to be the first one to do this. Let somebody else go get it. I want to lead by example. I want to do it first. First things first. I don't tell people to do what I don't do. I don't tell people to do what I don't do. That's a phony. If I tell people to sacrifice, I sacrifice. Anybody in ministry that is not honoring God in their giving, I got a word for you. Quit ministry. Just quit. It's a waste of time. God won't bless you. When you intentionally rob from God, you will not be blessed. And it also affects my children when I rob from God. Today we're going to give God our best. Say amen. You can't do ministry on this level without sacrifice. I do not apologize for preaching the word of God. I do not apologize for the principles of prosperity. I do not apologize for teaching strategies of success. The word of God works. Somebody said, I tried, it didn't work. No, giving is not something you try. Giving is something you live by. It's a lifestyle. Hallelujah. I want everybody that serves in ministry to stand. Everyone that serves in ministry to stand. I want you to come with your first fruits. And I want you, if you're giving with an envelope, even if you're not, if you're giving electronically, I want you just to come and touch the table. Because I believe that this table is significant. As we honor God and we put our best offering on the altar, if you gave with your phone, just touch it and say, Lord, this is my first fruits. I lay it on the altar. I lay it on the altar. Just come across the room. Those that serve, those on pastoral care, those that serve in ministry, 
those that lead. You cannot lead unless you're the example. Everybody in this church that's a tither and a giver, come across this stage. Now let me share this again with you. If you want what you never had, you got to do things differently. People all the time, the main prayer request I get is financial breakthrough. You cannot pray. No man of God can break it off of you. You have to break it off yourself through obedience and giving. First fruits. This is my best. I honor God with my best. I honor God with my best. I honor God with my best. This is our best today. Today, this is our best. Put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. Those online, put it on the altar. Honor God with your sacrifice. Honor God with your best. All over this room, all over this room, the Bible says if you rob from God, you're cursed. But if you prove me in your giving, I'll open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. There shall not be enough room to receive. Today, I promise you this, people's lives have, will never be the same after this service. Anyone else that's a tither and a giver that's in covenant with God by sacrifice. You're in covenant with God because of sacrifice. Put your best. Don't tip God. If it's not your best, keep it. You're going to need it. I mean that sincerely. If it's not your best, don't even give it. Just don't even waste your time. I'm not going to lie to people. Too many liars on television. Too many liars behind pulpits. I will have to give an account for my life. It's your best. It's your best. All you young kids, all these millennials, it's your best. I pray it is. I pray it is because God's going to move on behalf of your sacrifice. God's going to move on behalf of our best. For God so loved the world, he gave. You know what I learned? Givers always gain. Takers always lose. God is the greatest giver I've ever known. He gave us his only son. What a day. What a day. Father, now, I thank you. You've seen their faith and their obedience. You know those that are serious and those that are playing games. You know those that are genuine and those that are ingenuine. I pray now, as a servant of God, I pray over every gift, every sacrifice, every seed of love. I pray that this seed would produce a barn busting, ever increasing harvest of miracles this year. Those that are giving online, I declare the same. You said decree a thing, it'll be established and the light of your favor will shine upon us. Lord, I pray right now that your favor would shine upon these seeds. Your favor would shine upon every house that's represented. Lord, as we give today, we honor you. And I pray that you'd give us the desires of our heart as we obey you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want everybody to jump to your feet and erupt an elaborate praise to God. Elaborate praise to God as Pastor Olga is coming. quickly through the announcements. I don't want to hinder the sweet spirit that's in this house. I know we welcomed some who've been here for the first time, but if you could kindly stand, if this is your first time here, we'd like to greet you properly. That's this is so great. I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. I pray that it's one of many more times to come. Please give Pastor and I the opportunity to get to meet you in the back, have some fr free refreshments in the Kingdom Cafe, and we'd like to know how you heard of the church, how you came to be with us today. Tomorrow night, Monday, is Bible study at 6.30 p.m. with Dr. Rose, a one-on-one -on -one intimate class setting. And I believe there's going to be food tomorrow. 
because the fast is over today. Praise the Lord. Directly after Bible study, in the studio is Empowered Live with Pastor Kevin. We love a live audience, so please make sure you're in the Hall of Faith no later than 720 because we begin promptly at 730. If you're not able to join us in the studio, you can watch online via Facebook Live, YouTube, or Instagram Live. This Tuesday, ladies, Heart to Heart with Pastor Liz McGinnis. The gift. Refreshments are served and child care is available. Now, we haven't gathered since November, so we're getting a double portion because we're making up for December. So, ladies, you have an opportunity. Call all your girlfriends and tell them we're having a ladies' night at Jesus Lord Church. Next Sunday is the deadline for Mission Outreach Nicaragua to bring any donations. Again, we're focusing on the babies and the toddlers. So we ask that you bring toys, clothing for that age range, boy or girl, because we want to send the bins out next week after that date. February is coming soon, and we have some exciting things. Sweetie Grams are back. Now, if you've ever experienced the Sweetie Grams that we sell here, I think they're a little better than the bakery. And they're at a nominal cost. So it's a great way to tell your sweetie you love them or to evangelize even and let them know Jesus loves them. So back in the Kingdom Cafe on February the 12th, we'll have some Sweetie Grams beautifully packaged and ready for purchase. Then that same day, at 6 o'clock, we're having the Super Bowl watch party. Wow, okay. Anyways, if you'd like to watch the football game, the Super Bowl football game on that Sunday, we will be hosting a party. We went upstate and we bought every possible sauce that could be put on a chicken wing. We have the Depot sauce. We have Brooks barbecue sauce. And I found out that Buffalo Wild Wings sells their sauce. So we even have that. We're going to have french fries and pizza and chips and dip and cake. And it's just we're breaking the fast right. Amen. However, I need you to sign up. It's a nominal fee that covers the expense, $10 per adult, $5 kids under 13, and that money needs to be paid no later than February 5th. Now, I know a lot of us are in the habit of, we're going to pay at the door. No, you're not. You're going to pay Sunday, February 5th. So please, if you have not paid, watch it at home with the TV dinner. Water baptism. We're going to be scheduling a date. Please sign up at a Connect station, and we'll let you know exactly when that is. We're on an app at the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. You can stay connected on social media via Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We still sell merch. We have sweaters, T-shirts, hoodies, sweats. We're going to come into a new spring line. The book is going to be finalized soon. Please bear with me. It takes a lot of work, but it's going to be there, and you're going to be able to rep Jesus. We're going to encourage you for the spring and summer seasons that we wear them for midweek service, so you're going to want to get some merch. And that concludes the announcements for today. We're going to go into the Hall of Faith and Fellowship. Amen. I know you were blessed by today's message. Now listen, if you're ever in the Long Island area, come and be a part of what God is doing. We're seeing miracles happen every week. Souls are being saved. Lives transformed by the anointing of God. Now listen, every Thursday, 7 p.m. is our midweek service for Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I would love to pray for you. You could send us your prayer request right now to prayer 
at JILC.org. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Also, we have a brand new app. Download it today. If you are blessed, sow a seed. Make an investment in eternity. Go to the website, JILC.org. I'm Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Until next time, be blessed.